Interestingly, navigating the regulatory landscape for brain implants provides its own form of entertainment, largely because government agencies are trying to regulate technology that sounds like it, is, it belongs in a science fiction movie. The American FDI has established guidelines for implanted brain-computer interface, BCI, devices for patients with paralysis or amputation, which is surely one of the more unusual regulatory categories in medical device approval. Precision Neuroscience recently became the first company developing wireless brain-computer interface to receive FDA clearance for their Layer 7 cortical interface. The device, which looks remarkably like um, scotch tape embedded with um, 1,000 electrodes, can be implanted for up to 30 days. The fact that cutting-edge neurotechnology resembles office supplies is somehow perfectly appropriate for our current timeline. The regulatory approval process requires companies to demonstrate safety and efficiency, which creates the surreal situation of clinical trials where participants are asked to think specific thoughts on command, while researchers measure how well their brain implants translate those thoughts into computer actions. It's probably the only medical trial where please think about moving your left hand is a standardized protocol rather than a request that would result in immediate <laughs> psychiatric evaluation. Now, the global race to develop brain implant technology has created some unexpectedly entertaining international dynamics. While American companies focus on flashy demonstrations and social media presence, other countries are taking more pragmatic approaches that sometimes produce amusing contrasts. The uh, Chinese brain chip program, for instance, has been notably focused on practical applications rather than viral marketing moments. The researchers emphasize helping patients with everyday tasks like uh, controlling robotic arms to pour water or transmit thoughts to computer screens. Um, it's some, you yeah, have to admit, it's a refreshingly straightforward approach. Uh, now, European researchers are taking yet another approach, focusing heavily on non-invasive alternatives and um, integration with existing technologies. Uh, Cognition and BlackRock Neurotech have partnered to develop systems that combine implantable brain-computer interfaces with augmented reality platforms. The result is technology that sounds like it was designed by someone who couldn't decide between becoming a neurosurgeon or a video game developer. Perhaps inevitably, brain implants have become the subject of internet humor, with memes circulating about everything, from thinking your way to carpal tunnel syndrome to jokes about brain implants getting computer viruses. The technology has reached the, um, the peculiar uh, cultural uh, milestone where it's uh, simultaneously cutting edge medical science and material for social media comedy. Some of the humor centers around the practical implications of thought control technology. What happens when you have an intrusive thought while controlling a computer? Do brain implants come with mental firewalls? Can you accidentally order 500 pounds of cat food while daydreaming about lunch? These questions reflect genuine concerns about the technology wrapped in the comforting package of absurdist humor. The fact that Elon Musk is involved had only amplified the meme potential given his uh, track record of turning serious technological developments into internet spectacles, which actually is a good thing because it brings this technology closer to the people, makes them understand what's going on. When the first Neuralink patient posts memes created entirely th through thought, it represents a perfect convergence of cutting-edge neuroscience and internet culture that could only happen in 2025. But now, coming back to reality. The real stories from brain implant patients reveal a mix of profound life changes and hilariously mundane details that highlight the gap between the technology's potential and its current reality. Nolan describes the experience of having a brain implant as surprisingly unremarkable. He says, if I had lost my memory and I woke up and you told me there was something implanted in my brain, then I probably wouldn't believe you. I have no sensation of it, no way of telling it's there unless somebody goes and physically pushes on it. 
this disconnect between the futuristic implication of brain implants and their uh, prosaic daily reality creates some amusing situations. Um, patients need to remember to charge their brain implants like any other electronic device. Imagine uh, setting a phone alarm and <laughs> remember to plug in your brain tonight. The mundane <laughs> practicalities of cyborg life are far less glamorous than uh, science fiction suggested. The um, social dynamics are equally interesting. Family members become tech support for brain implants, learning to troubleshoot neural interfaces like they once learned to program uh, VCRs. Nolan's mother holds a magnetic disc over his implant to wake it up when it goes into sleep mode, turning her into something between a caregiver and a human power button. Looking ahead, the trajectory of brain implant technology suggests we are heading towards scenarios that would have seemed ridiculous just a few years ago. Companies are developing implants that could potentially enhance memory, regulate emotions, and even allow direct brain-to-brain -brain communication. The memory enhancement applications are particularly intriguing. Researchers are working on systems that could help people with Alzheimer's disease by providing external memory storage accessible through thought. It's like having a backup hard drive for your brain, complete with the inevitable questions about whether you remembered something or just accessed your neural cloud storage. Emotion regulation through brain implants opens up even more philosophical territory. If an implant can detect and modify your emotional state, are you still experiencing authentic emotions? Or are you already Borg? It is theory meets technology in ways that would make both Freud and Steve Jobs simultaneously proud and terrified. Um, the um, cochlear implant integration research suggests future brain implants might work together as integrated systems rather than standalone devices. Imagine a future where your hearing implant talks to your memory implant to help you remember where you heard that song, while your mood regulation implant adjusts your emotional response to make the memory more pleasant. Moreover, brain implants are beginning to create unexpected workplace scenarios that highlight how unprepared society is for cyborg colleagues. How do you write a job description that includes must be comfortable working with brain enhanced individuals? What's the protocol when someone's brain implant needs a software update during an important meeting? The development of wireless brain implant technology means these scenarios are moving from theoretical to practical faster than most organizations can develop policies. Research shows that wireless brain implants can function effectively without constant medical supervision, opening the door for brain-enhanced individuals to participate fully in regular workplace activities. This creates delightfully absurd human resources <laughs> challenge. Do brain implants count as assistive technology or performance enhancement? If someone's neural interface gives them faster reaction times or better memory, is that equivalent to using performance-enhancing drugs in sports? These questions require developing entirely new categories of workplace you know, equity and fairness and assessment. Now, the gaming community has embraced brain implant technology with characteristic enthusiasm and creativity. Competitive gaming leagues are beginning to grapple with questions about neural interfaces categories and whether thought-controlled gaming constitutes a separate competitive class. Nolan Arbo's ability to beat non-disabled gamers using only his thoughts has created fascinating discussions about the nature of competitive advantage in gaming. Is using a brain implant to control games fundamentally different from using a specialized, ga specialized gaming mouse or mechanical keyboard? The technology challenges existing assumptions about what constitutes fair play in digital competitions. Some gaming communities are embracing brain control players as pioneers of a new competitive category rather than viewing them as having an unfair advantage. This perspective shift represents a broader cultural adaptation to reality that human machine interfaces are becoming normalized rather than exotic. Brain implant patients have become inadvertent social media celebrities with their posts about daily life, 
offering unprecedented insights into human-machine integration. When Bradford G. Smith announces, I am typing this with my brain on social media, it's simultaneously a testament to technological achievement and a perfectly normal Tuesday for him. The casual nature of these posts highlights how quickly extraordinary technology becomes mundane for its users. Brain implant patients post about software updates, battery life, and calibration sessions with the same matter-of-fact tone other people use to complain about their smartphones. This normalization through social media is helping society adjust to the reality of brain-enhanced humans. When cyborgs are posting memes and complaining about technology glitches, just like everyone else, it becomes harder to view them as fundamentally different or threatening. The integration of AI assistants with brain implants represents perhaps the most profound shift in human technology interaction since the invention of language. Bradford G. Smith's use of AI chatbots to enhance his brain implant communication creates a three-way collaboration between human consciousness, artificial intelligence, and neural interface technology. This convergence suggests a future where the boundaries between human and artificial intelligence become increasingly blurred. When someone's thoughts are amplified by AI and transmitted through a brain implant, traditional concepts of individual cognition and authentic communication require fundamental re-examination. The practical benefits are undeniable. AI assistance dramatically expands the capabilities of brain implants beyond simple motor control to complex communication and reasoning support. It is assistive technology that enhances human capability rather than replacing it, creating augmented human rather than obsolete ones. The brain implant revolution of 2025 represents more than technological advancement. It's a fundamental shift in how we understand the relationship between human consciousness and digital technology. The stories emerging from labs, hospitals, and patients' homes reveal a future that's simultaneously more mundane and more extraordinary than science fiction predicted. As brain implants transition from experimental technology to practical medical devices, they are creating new categories of human experience that require updated social, ethical, and regulatory frameworks. The patients pioneering these technologies are not just medical test subjects. They are the first members of a new category of human being, one that seamlessly integrates biological and digital capabilities. The humor, challenges, and triumphs of early brain implant adoption suggest that the cyber future will be characterized less by dramatic transformation than by gradual normalization. The technology that once seemed like science fiction is becoming as routine as smartphones, complete with the same frustration about battery life, software updates, and occasional technical difficulties. Perhaps most remarkably, the brain implant pioneers of 2025 are approaching their technological enhancement with distinctly human characteristics. Humor, resilience, creativity, and the remarkable ability to adapt to circumstances that would have been unimaginable just a few years ago. They are proving that becoming a cyborg doesn't mean becoming less human. It might just mean becoming more authentically ourselves with better tech support. And this, this what knowing is winning, still in the old-fashioned analog neurobrain format. Thank you very much for watching.